Hi, my name is Rhys Oxner. I'm the director of the customer and field engagement team here at Red Hat. We're responsible for strategic customer engagement and technical marketing for hybrid platforms. In this short video, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of Red Hat's OpenShift Assisted Installer, a component that has been evolving over the last couple of years, but has recently become generally available. For those that aren't familiar with the Assisted Installer, it's a SaaS-based utility that helps with the deployment of OpenShift, simplifying the provisioning of the cluster from the ground up with minimal external dependencies via console.redhat.com. For the purpose of keeping this video as short as possible, many sections have been heavily sped up. To get started, users need to navigate through to console.redhat.com, select OpenShift, select the data center tab given that this solution is typically suited to on-premise clusters, and you'll see the assisted installer option at the top. I'll select Create Cluster, and it'll take me through to the Cluster Creation Wizard. It'll first ask me for my name of my cluster, which I'll call RDO, my initials, and then fill out the base domain, which matches the environment that I'll be deploying into. Now I can select the OpenShift version, where a range of releases are supported, but I'll go with the latest 4.10.11 version. I then have the option to deploy single node OpenShift, suitable for the smallest possible footprints comprising of a single server. I'm not going to do that today, I'm going to deploy a three node compact cluster. And secondly, whether I want to deploy an ARM based cluster, which again, I'm not doing today, I'm using x86 based hardware. So I'll leave both of these unselected. There's also some additional options for manually updating the pull secret and enabling encryption for my nodes, but I'll leave these for today. When ready, I'll hit next to proceed. I'm then presented with the host discovery screen where I'm able to provide further configuration such as enabling additional functionality like OpenShift virtualization or OpenShift data foundations, which I'll skip for now. Provisioning nodes within the assisted installer couldn't be easier. We need only generate an ISO based on our configuration, attach it to our target nodes and boot them up. They'll then appear in the UI for our use. I'll select the add hosts option where a new pane will show up. I can optionally configure a HTTP proxy, pull in my secure shell key for troubleshooting, before having the choice of a minimal disk image or a full disk image created. And given that I'm going to boot my target nodes via virtual media, I'll select this option as it's a much smaller image. Now I'll select generate discovery ISO and one will be made available for me to download. I'll copy the link to this image and jump over to my remote desktop session where I have virtual media access to the target bare metal systems. I'm going to run through this section really quickly for the purposes of the video, but I'm downloading the generated disk image attaching it to the virtual media on the Dell blades that I've got access to and powering them on. This is the extent of the work I need to do to get these machines registered via the assisted installer. These machines will boot up into a CoreOS disk image, start up an agent, and will allow us to remotely configure and deploy the OpenShift cluster with the chosen options. After a few minutes, each of these hosts will report in and we can view the discovered specifications of the systems, including CPU, memory, disks, and networking configuration. Now that all three have reported in, we can click next to proceed. On the following page, we're asked to configure networking for our cluster. It's automatically detected the single subnet I have available and has defaulted to the DHCP based virtual IP allocation, which I wish to override as I pre-configured my DNS with different IP addresses. I'll skip advanced networking for now as the default suit by environment. If I scroll down, you'll see that the UI is complaining that my cluster is insufficient, primarily due to networking access and NTP. But after a few seconds, these issues are resolved and we can proceed further. I'll click next and it'll take me to a review page. This all looks good to me, so we'll select create cluster. Now the cluster will be deployed. I can watch all of the various different steps and view a detailed log of cluster events by clicking on the button at the bottom of the page. As you can see, the nodes have now progressed into a starting installation phase, and you'll also witness that one of the nodes has been selected as the temporary bootstrap node. The deployment process simply deploys a temporary two node cluster on the other two nodes, where the third stand in bootstrap machine helps establish the cluster. Then when the cluster is up, it pivots and gets deployed as a full third cluster node. The deployment process takes approximately 30 minutes end to end within this environment and we can watch the various steps again individually on one of the nodes or via looking at the detailed cluster events panel. So there we go, installation is complete. 
I will copy the Kube admin password that it provides and select the console URL and validate that my cluster is up and running. And it all looks good. The dashboard is presented, and if I navigate over to the nodes section, you can see all three of my machines reporting in. And that concludes today's demonstration. Thank you for watching. I hope that it gave you a better understanding of the assisted installer.